So let's go through an internal bending moment axial and shear force problem. This is similar to something that was posted in our discussion forum. So we're going to have some kind of a frame that is hanging off the ceiling and has an applied load. So once again, I'm going to go ahead and change up the dimensions and the magnitude of the load. Let's go through this and then you should hopefully be able to do something similar. What we're interested in here is actually cutting into the beam and looking at the internal forces that are acting in here in the axial direction, the same direction as the beam, 90 degrees to that, the shear direction, and the internal bending moment. We want to figure out what all these internal forces are. And to do that, I can look at the top piece of this beam or the bottom piece of the beam. It looks like it's probably going to be easier to analyze the top of this thing, which means that we need to figure out the forces acting on this pin up here. To do that, we're going to look at the entire structure and walk through external forces. And then once we figure out what is on A, then we can go ahead and slice off this piece and look at what's inside of this piece. Okay, as we start looking at these external forces, notice a few things. This member is a two-force member. It's in pure compression for the loading shown. And what that means is that point B does not have two different unknowns. We know the direction of B. So that gives us three unknowns that we can solve for with just our standard equilibrium equations. Okay, so we have one unknown that we can split into X and Y components from this angle. We've got some dimensions to be able to figure out what that angle is. So let's go ahead and walk through those equilibrium equations to find our AX, AY, and force B, three unknowns, three equations, three unknowns. In the X direction, we're going to have AX and BX equal and opposite to one another. So it looks like AX is going to be going to the right. In the Y direction, we have AY is in the middle. And this middle piece is kind of holding up what's on the left side and what's on the right side. So it's almost like a balance beam where it's pushing down on the right down on the left and right here in the middle is holding everything up. For our third equation, the moment equation, what point would be best to take the moment around? We could take the moment around point A or B. Each would be equally useful for us. Let's go ahead and take the moment around point A since we know more about the force at B. So looking at the moment at A, that means we don't need to worry about the forces acting at A. And we're going to go ahead and draw our first vector down to that 125 newtons. Draw in the line of action of that force. And you can see the perpendicular piece that will actually create that moment. So the important piece of that position vector here is going to be the direction in that I direction. That's what's going to go into our moment for this 125 Newton force. For the other piece of this, we're going to go from point A to B. And this goes into BX, BY. You can see that BX is not rotating it. BY is going to be the piece that's rotating it here. And in order to find BY, we know that the moment has to add to zero. So that means that what's happening on the left-hand side here is going to have to balance what B is contributing to the moment. So we have a magnitude of that moment. Moment is equal to R cross F, or BY is equal to moment divided by that distance. So 18 divided by 0.1, 
just move that decimal place over, and now we have the y component of b. And if we have the y component of b, then we can figure out what the entire force at b is. So, so there's our force at b is 193. And we can go ahead and walk around the rest of that support. So remember, in the x direction, we had these guys equal and opposite. So ax is positive 46 if B, bx is negative 46. And for the y direction, ay is holding everything up. So that 312 comes from holding up 125 and also 187 pushing down. So down on the right, down on the left, and AY is in the middle of both of those holding everything up in the middle. Okay, now that we know what is happening at point A, we can now tear off the top of this little guy. So let's look at just this top piece. If we balance everything in the X direction, we can see that internally we'll have to have a force going to the left. So 46 to the right, and our shear force is 46 to the left. To balance everything out in the y direction, we have 312 pulling up, which means our axial force is going to be 312 holding down. And the final calculation for our internal bending moment so we'll have to reach back to our original dimensions from J to AX. This is the piece that's going to go into that bending moment. That will give us 14.1 Newton meters inside of that beam that's resisting the moment. Okay, so that is internal forces. You, you find what's happening first on the external pieces of it, so how it is constrained to the outside world. And then once you figure out what's happening externally to the system, use tricks like two force members, you will then jump into the inside of that beam. And every single piece of this has to add to zero. The forces all have to add to zero. The moments all have to add to zero. So inside it is balancing all of that and if you can do one point inside I could do a similar thing for this beam so I could figure out this point or this point or this point and that translates into entire shear and bending moment diagrams so I could graph how the internal axial force and internal moment is changing as I walk through this thing or maybe I look at walking through the base of this beam and how the internal moments and axial forces are changing through the inside. So that will be a bonus question is to take some segment of this and actually graph out how those internal forces are changing with position. You'll do this in mechanics of materials.